What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to talk about the five languages that you need to be familiar with in 2019. No exceptions. In this video we're going to stick purely to the facts and not about any opinions and I'm going to completely leave my biases on languages totally out of it. The things I looked at for each of these languages are things like the merits of the language itself, community size, development activity with the language, the number of possible use cases and roles that it plays in modern development, and then of course project stats, people who are using it, people who are not. And after taking all of that into account and more, here are my five languages you need to be familiar with in 2019. Coming in at number five is Java. To start, it's an old and stable language with about 23 years backing it. And this is important because a lot of new languages and technologies are all flashes in the pan, and this is not one of them. This has been all around way too long. Java is backed by Oracle, and some may say this is a good or bad thing, and maybe for the business side of it, it might not be a good thing, but speaking strictly on the technology, I think it being backed by Oracle is a very good thing because Oracle has a lot of money and they have a lot of resources and reason to make sure that Java stays on the forefront and is still relevant in 2019. Java was an early competitor in the web scene by way of Java EE. And what this means is there's still a lot of talent out there who can make Java web applications and there's also lots of Java web applications still out there. By way of Java Micro Edition, it had a foothold in software for things like early phones and other devices. Even today in 2019, it's not uncommon to find things like TVs, DVD players, Blu-ray players that have Java software built in. This next one's a big one. It's the primary language for Android development. With something like 2 billion active Android devices and close to 2 million Android apps, the need for Java talent is not going away anytime soon. Java is commonly taught in college, and in some cases even in high school. If you're going for a computer science degree, you will invariably take a Java class. Java has sizable community package support, about 280,000 packages via their Maven repository. Coming in at number 4 is PHP. Whether you like it or not, it's PHP that powers the majority of websites on the internet. Even though it has its quirks, it's still a very simple language with a very low barrier to entry. Thanks to Apache, PHP applications are pretty low maintenance. And this is an important reason why it's so popular, because things like Ruby requires a web server like Webrick. Java requires something like Tomcat. Node.js, of course, is its own web server, and that's required. But with PHP, you simply install Apache, install PHP, install modphp, drop an index.php file in the web root, and poof, you're done. To piggyback on the last point, it's extremely easy to install if it's not already there. It's going to be the primary language that's present on Linux shared hosting. So if you're looking for budget hosting because maybe you can't or don't want to manage the server yourself, it's very likely going to be PHP that's going to be the language that's installed. It's the base language for Hacklang and HHVM. If you're not sure what those are, Hacklang is a statically typed variant of PHP made by the Facebook people. And then HHVM is Hip Hop Virtual Machine, which is the virtual machine that executes that statically typed variant of PHP. Since PHP is somewhat slow, this was a way of making PHP run really fast. PHP also has a sizable set of community packages via Packagist, about 200,000 packages. Coming in at number 3 is C Sharp. To start, C Sharp is backed by Microsoft. And just like I thought Oracle backing Java was a good thing, for the same reasons I think that Microsoft backing C Sharp is a good thing. C Sharp is going to be the primary language for Windows development, particularly software that does not need to target any other systems. There's of course a lot of Windows installations out there, and it's even more prevalent in corporate environments who almost exclusively use Windows software. This means that there's a litany of software out there that's going to be written in C-sharp. If you're interested in game development with Unity, it's going to be C-sharp that you're going to be using with that. If you're going to be doing cross-platform app development with Xamarin, it's going to be C-sharp that you're going to be using with that platform. Though the smallest community package list out of all the languages I'm showing here, it still has a sizable 150,000 community packages that are available via NuGet. Coming in at number two is Python. Python has an extremely simple and intuitive syntax, which just lowers the barrier to entry. Python is currently experiencing wide adoption for data science and AI type applications. And the people writing tools and frameworks for these applications are writing them primarily in Python first. I expect to see Python carrying the torch here well into the future. Even though Python is close to 30 years old, it's only recently become popular for web applications, and it's had growing adoption due to a lot of new tools that's been created for that purpose. Python's the official language of the Raspberry Pi, and with something like 26 million units sold, this just further increases Python's footprint. It also makes it very likely that kids might see Python as one of their first languages. Increasing its versatility, Python has several implementations, such as CPython, IronPython, Jython, and PyPython. 
There's about 180,000 community packages that are available via PyPy. And coming in at number one is none other than JavaScript. JavaScript currently has a language monopoly in the browser. And the reason it has a monopoly is because JavaScript executes client-side, which means if you ever wanted to replace JavaScript with something else, you would have to upgrade literally every browser on the planet. This is to say that disabling JavaScript in 2019 would break the entire internet. JavaScript is the official language for Node.js for backend development. And even though Node.js is only 10 years old, it's experiencing rapid adoption for backend development. JavaScript is the primary language for building HTML5 mobile apps and React native apps. Primarily the latter, HTML5 mobile apps are not really that cool in 2019. React native apps is kind of the new thing if you're not developing native. And when I say native, of course, I mean Java for Android, Swift for iOS. It's the primary language for Electron desktop app development. This may not seem like a huge deal right at this moment, but I've been saying for many years that the browser will be the de facto platform for all applications going forward. And Electron essentially is one tab of the browser, but with APIs to attach to the system. And with those two things, it makes a really compelling case to use that in place of, say, Windows application development or like Java cross-platform desktop development. JavaScript is going to be the primary language for 2D and 3D graphics with WebGL. If this is the first time you're hearing about this, make sure to look that up on YouTube for some of the demonstrations of WebGL. It will absolutely blow your mind. JavaScript was built from the ground up on top of the invent loop. Because JavaScript originated as a browser language and browser development is very much event-based, it makes sense that the language would be very much event-based. And because of this, JavaScript, particularly Node.js, holds significant advantage over other languages in things that are heavy with event-based actions. And finally, JavaScript has a massive 800,000 community packages available via NPM. And that's it. That's my list of five languages that you should be familiar with in 2019. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I put a lot of thought into this, and I tried to make it by being as objective as possible and keeping my biases completely out, so I hope I did a good job at that. I'm also curious to know how much you agree or disagree, so you should take a moment and put your top five in the comments that you think people should be familiar with in 2019. And if I missed any points, either in favor or not in favor of these five, certainly put those in the comments as well. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.